Good evening. I am Colleen Swain, the Director of the World Heritage Office. On behalf of the City of San Antonio, I would like to welcome you to our annual World Heritage Open House. Every year since the City first established the World Heritage Office in 2016, the Open House provides us with an opportunity to share updates with you on projects, events, and other issues important to you. Tonight, we have a full agenda on items ranging from updates and progress on the 2017 bond projects, such as streets and the new World Heritage Center, to updates on the Alamo plan and other activities and information from our partners. Your feedback is important to us. So for tonight's program, please use the chat or comment function on Facebook Live and or YouTube. I encourage you to type in your comments, questions, or suggestions so that our member of our city team can address. If you would like to send your questions or comments via email, please send them to worldheritage at sanantonio.gov or call 210-207-2111 to speak with a member of our office. In closing, I would like to thank my staff who will be here to answer questions you may have, and especially Rogelio Munoz, who worked behind the scenes to put this whole event together. Additionally, we owe thanks to the City of San Antonio's Public Works Department and Development Services for their ongoing assistance on a range of projects. We appreciate the work you do for our residents. Also, I want to thank our World Heritage Partners, the National Park Service, and the San Antonio River Authority for their partnership and coordination through the World Heritage Area. So let's begin with tonight's World Heritage Open House, and I would like to introduce District 3 City Councilwoman Rebecca J. Villagran. Good evening and welcome to the sixth annual World Heritage Open House. I'm Rebecca J. Villagran, your District 3 City Council member for the South and the Southeast sides of San Antonio. Thank you for joining us this evening for tonight's virtual presentation. Last year was the first online World Heritage Open House and as you know, much has happened over the past year. In response to the pandemic, the city of San Antonio and its many partners, as well as local residents, businesses, faith-based organizations, and the state and federal governments have all come together to provide various resources for our community. When possible, we continued with business as usual, even if we had to switch to virtual formats for the safety of the community. Virtual community meetings took place so your voice could still be heard and your input shared on the projects that mattered to you. Programming transitioned from in-person to online for residents and visitors. The World Heritage Office and Mission Marquee Plaza the San Antonio Public Library, the San Antonio Missions National Historical Park, and many others have provided many free virtual events over the past year. The City of San Antonio has worked hard to keep the residents and visitors engaged during this time, and we sincerely thank you for staying connected any way you could over this past year. Now, we can begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel, and Although the pandemic is not over yet, there is much to look forward to. That is why we are here tonight, to look ahead at all the exciting projects we have coming up in the World Heritage Area and the resources available to you. Tonight's presentation is also another opportunity for you to share your feedback, so I invite you to add your questions or comments in the chat of tonight's live stream. You can also email the World Heritage Office at worldheritage at sanantonio.gov or call 210-207-2111. We will share updates on projects, including the 2017 bond projects that are coming very soon. We're also excited to share updates on the new World Heritage Center. Staff from city departments are tuning in to answer your questions and address any concerns that you may have. It is through our continued collaboration and meaningful community input that we can enhance opportunities for our neighborhoods in the South Side and the entire San Antonio community. Again, thank you for joining us this evening and being part of the sixth annual World Heritage Open House.
Hi, my name is Sean Bove. I am Capital Projects Officer at the Public Works Department of the City of San Antonio. And today I'd like to provide you with some update on the 2017 bond projects in our city's World Heritage Area. Before I begin, I'd like to share brief information about the 2017-2022 bond program and funding for projects in the city's World Heritage Area. On May 6, 2017, the voters in San Antonio passed an $850 million general obligation bond program, of which $37 million was specifically for projects within the city's World Heritage Area. This included $25 million for streets, bridges, and sidewalks, $5 million for a comprehensive signage and wayfinding program, $5 million for a World Heritage Facility, and $2.25 million for park improvements and land acquisition. The $25 million investment for improving key corridor streets in the area includes $13 million for Roosevelt Avenue, $5 million for South Cross Boulevard, $5 million for South Pressa Street, and $2 million for Mission Road. The first project is Roosevelt Avenue, which is a main thoroughfare reaching from downtown San Antonio to outside Loop 410. It's flanked by a municipal airport, businesses, private properties, neighborhood associations, schools, and community public spaces, such as Mission Marquee Plaza, Mission Branch Library, YMCA, and Mission San Jose. Roosevelt spans at approximately 5.6 miles across two council districts. The 2017 bond program allocated a total of 13 million for improvements along Roosevelt Avenue. A breakdown of the funding allocates 5 million for Roosevelt North or the portion of the corridor in District 5 that is between the historic bridge at South St. Mary Street and Interstate Highway 10. Approximately 8 million is allocated to Roosevelt South or the portion of the corridor in District 3 between Interstate Highway 10 down to Loop 410. In addition to the funding allocated from the bond, another 5.6 million has been contributed through TxDOT. In total, approximately 18.6 million has been committed toward the first phase of improvements along Roosevelt Avenue. As a result of a 15-month public input process, the community, residents, and businesses along the corridor created a robust vision for the future of the corridor. The City of San Antonio completed the Roosevelt Avenue Visual Concept Plan last summer in June 2020. However, the current 2017 bond program funding is limited and improvements will be prioritized and phased based on community feedback. The public was surveyed last year to select the sections most important to them and the top two sections included Section 1 from South St. Mary Street to the San Antonio Lighthouse for the Blind and Section 2 from the San Antonio Lighthouse for the Blind to VFW Boulevard. Approximately $5 million was allocated from the 2017 bond for Roosevelt Avenue North in District 5. The city will install five-foot bike lanes beginning at Eagle Land Drive and South St. Mary Street to the historic bridge. These bike lanes will connect to existing infrastructure at Eagle Land Drive and enhance connectivity for cyclists to the Eagle Land Reach as part of the San Antonio River's Mission Reach. Additionally, new five-foot sidewalks, along with a one-foot buffer and five-foot wide bike lanes will be installed on both sides of Roosevelt Avenue North, from the historic bridge to Interstate Highway 10 at Steves Avenue. The roadway configuration will become a three-lane cross-section with two 10-feet travel lanes and a center turn lane, also 10 feet in width. These improvements will allow Via Transit to sustain its travel times. The bike lanes and buffer allow VIA buses to pass any obstruction in the single lane that may be stopped or in the way of traffic. The bond also includes funding for ADA access under the Union Pacific Railroad Bridge, as well as other improvements. The consultant for both Roosevelt Avenue North and South is Civil Engineering Consultants Incorporated. We're approximately 95% of the way into the design phase, which just means we're fine-tuning the plans with the other agencies we are working with, like SAWS, CPS, and TxDOT. We plan to advertise the project and begin accepting bids in July, and anticipate a construction start date sometime in November of this year. 
The 2017 bond program allocated $8 million for Roosevelt Avenue South in District 3. The project limits for this project are Steves Avenue, just south of Interstate Highway 10 to VFW Boulevard. The proposed design from Interstate Highway 10 to the San Antonio River will include a three-lane roadway, two 11-foot travel lanes with a 10-foot center turn lane, five-foot bike lanes, and five-foot wide sidewalks on both sides of the street. The city will also install a pedestrian bike bridge on the western side of Roosevelt Avenue across the San Antonio River. The three-lane roadway will widen after crossing the river going southbound and include five-foot sidewalks, five-foot bike lanes, a five-foot buffer on both sides, and will tie into South Cross Boulevard onto VFW Boulevard with the improvements. The project consultant for Roosevelt Avenue South is Civil Engineering Consultants Incorporated. We've reached the 40% design milestone and will be hosting a public input meeting in May 2021 to reveal the proposed plans to the public and get your input on the options we've created for the bridge and the layout for the rest of the corridor. The South Cross Boulevard Bond Project is a $5 million investment in Council District 3 and is dedicated for corridor improvements along South Cross between Roosevelt Avenue and Pleasanton Street. These improvements will include traffic signal upgrades at Mission Road and South Cross, as well as new curbs, five-foot sidewalks, and driveway approaches on the south side of South Cross from Roosevelt to Mission Road, and new curbs, five-foot sidewalks, and driveway approaches on both sides of South Cross from Mission Road to Pleasanton. The consultant for this project is BGE Incorporated. The City of San Antonio began the public input process with the community in September of 2018. During this process, the City provided information on the proposed improvements and solicited feedback from the residents. There was some additional right-of-way needed in order to perform these improvements and we're about 95% complete on those acquisitions. At present, we've completed the final design plans and project to begin construction in June of 2021. The city will invest $5 million for improvements to South Presa Street as part of the 2017 bond program. The project limits are from South Cross Boulevard to Southeast Military Drive. The city will construct corridor improvements to include pedestrian amenities and enhancements. This section of South Presa will become a three-lane roadway that will consist of two 11-foot travel lanes in each direction with a 12-foot center lane, five-foot sidewalks, and five-foot bike lanes on both sides of the street. In addition, the project will include full-depth pavement reconstruction between East Dunlick Court and Southeast Military Drive. Between East Dunlick Court, north to South Cross Boulevard, the city will perform a mill and overlay repaving of the street. There will also be two traffic signal improvements at Riverside Drive and Hot Wheels Boulevard and at South Cross, as well as drainage improvements to include culverts and inlets along the project limits. The consultant for this project is RPS Group. The next step in the process will involve a public hearing with TxDOT to receive public feedback on the project. This is slated for later this spring, 2021. Regarding the timeline, the project's design is at 95% completion rate. Construction is scheduled to begin in the next year in February 2022 and completed within 12 months by February of 2023. If you have any questions about any of these projects in San Antonio's World Heritage Area, please feel free to call me at 210-207-5836 or you can email me at sean.bove at sanantonio.gov. We at the City of San Antonio greatly appreciate your patience as we work to improve our great city. Hello, I am Matt Ginn, Capital Projects Officer at Public Works Department at the City of San Antonio. Today I'd like to provide you with an update on Mission Road, a 2017 bond project in our city's World Heritage Area. The project staff working on the Mission Road bond project are as follows. From the City of San Antonio's Public Works Department, the project management team consists of Amy Ramirez, PE and Project Engineer, Eric Velasquez, Senior Engineer Associate. The construction team is Florencio Rodriguez, PE Project Manager, 
and myself, Matt Ginn, Capital Projects Officer. From the City of San Antonio's World Heritage Office, Colleen Twain, Director, Rahelia Munoz, Special Projects Manager. The project consultant is Garza EMC, and the contractor is Jay Sanchez Contracting Inc. First, I want to provide some information on the project background for Mission Road. The City of San Antonio held the first public input meeting on August 23, 2018. During this meeting, the City shared a proposed scope of the project that initially included candy cane lighting in pavers between Southeast Military Drive and the San Antonio River. During this meeting, the residents shared their concerns for a lack of sidewalks, bike lanes, and lighting along Mission Road. Residents also shared a desire for safer connectivity between the river and the neighborhoods. On December 9, 2019, the city held a second community meeting to share an update on the project. At the direction of Councilwoman Viergran, the city was able to expand the scope of the project to accommodate the community's request for safer connectivity and enhanced pedestrian amenities. Additionally, city staff from Public Works and the World Heritage Office kept neighborhood associations informed and up to date on the project developments. The project scope for Mission Road will include streetscape improvements such as candy cane lighting and brick pavers on both sides and a 10-foot multi-use path from Southeast Military Drive to the Stinson Hike and Bike Trail that opened on November 1, 2019. Between 99th Street and Asakia Street, five-foot sidewalks will be constructed on the southern side of the street. Additionally, the city will construct five-foot sidewalks along the western side of Asakia Street, as well as brick pavers and candy cane lighting on both sides of the street. This connects pedestrians safely to the historic Espada Aqueduct, San Antonio River Walk Hike and Bike Trail, as well as Espada Road. This exhibit highlights the project's improvements as you can see, at the top left, the red line that begins at Southeast Military Drive represents the pavers and candy cane lights on both sides of Mission Road down southeast towards the San Antonio River. This continues onto Asakia Street between Mission Road and Ashley Road. The yellow line represents the 10-foot wide asphalt multi-use path from Southeast Military Drive to the Stinson Hike and Bike Trail. Lastly, the blue line represents the five foot wide sidewalks on Mission Road and Asakia Street that connects pedestrians to the Stinson Municipal Airport, Hike and Bike Trail, the San Antonio River, and the Espada Aqueduct. Beginning at the Southeast Military intersection heading south on Mission Road, a 10 foot multi-use path will be constructed on the northeast side of the street. Brick pavers and candy gain lights will be constructed on both sides of Mission Road to the San Antonio River. Starting at 99th Street, a five-foot sidewalk will be constructed on the south side of Mission Road and continue in front of Stinson Airfield to Asakia Street. The 10-foot multi-use path will continue and end at the Stinson Hike and Bike Trail parking lot. Brick pavers and candy cane lighting will be constructed on both sides and will continue down Mission Road. The 10-foot multi-use path will end at the Stinson Hike and Bike Trail parking lot and a five-foot sidewalk will be constructed and continue on both sides on Mission Road. Pedestrians will either continue down Asakia Road and cross over Mission Road to the north side of the street and join the five-foot sidewalk to the San Antonio River. Brick pavers and candy cane lighting will be on both sides and continue throughout the project limits. The five-foot sidewalk will turn off Mission Road and continue on the west side of Asakia Street and end at Ashley Road. Brick pavers and candy cane lighting will continue on both sides of Asakia Street. Lastly, along Mission Road between Asakia Street and the San Antonio River, the city will construct a five-foot sidewalk on the north side of the street. This portion of Mission Road will have brick pavers and candy cane lighting on both sides. The project budget for Mission Road is $5.4 million. Here is a breakdown of the funding. Approximately $2 million was allocated from the 2017 bond program. Because the improvements along Mission Road enhance wayfinding, an additional $2 million from the World Heritage Trail signage 
and wayfinding bond project was directed to Mission Road. An additional funding was secured in the amount of $1.1 million from the Mission Drive Inters and $300,000 from the city's aviation department. The project broke ground on January 11, 2021 and is estimated to be completed by April 2022. If you have any questions about the Mission Road Bond Project, please call me at 210-207-4612 or email me at matt.ginn at sanantonio.gov. Thank you. Thank you, Sean and Matt, for those updates. And now I'd like to turn it over to our City of San Antonio Public Works Assistant City Engineer, David McBath, who will tell us more about the World Heritage Trail street signage. Thank you, Colleen. Uh, yes, I'm David McBath, Assistant City Engineer with the Public Works Department for the City of San Antonio. And I'm glad to be here to give you an update on one of the other great projects in the World Heritage Area, our World Heritage Trail Signage and Wayfinding Project. So the, uh, the World Heritage Trail and Wayfinding Project is a part of our $37 million that, that was allocated in 2017-2022 bond program. Five million was dedicated for the World Heritage Trail Signage and Wayfinding Project. This project complements a wayfinding study commissioned by the San Antonio River Authority and input for residents during the World Heritage Symposia series led by Councilwoman Villagran to improve the wayfinding experience to the San Antonio missions, including signage. This project will be uh, consistent with new comprehensive World Heritage signage and wayfinding along the World Heritage Trail to provide guidance to residents and visitors, visitors to the San Antonio missions and to improve the overall experience to the city's historic World Heritage Area. The new signage will include the United Nationals U Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, historic designation, insignia, and directional reference to the World Heritage Trail route, San Antonio Missions, and the San Antonio River Walk, Hike, and Bike Trail. The budget for this project is $3 million, and the city was able to commit the remaining funds of $2 million to another wayfinding project in the World Heritage Area. This project includes the improvements to Mission Road, which connects residents from Southeast Military Drive and the nearby neighbors to the Stinson Hike and Bike Trail, Stinson Airport, Espada Aqueduct, and the San Antonio River onto Mission San Juan along the World Heritage Trail. And as you can see from the image, uh, we go all the way from Espada up to the Alamo, connecting uh, all the missions and the trails along the World Heritage Area. So the World Heritage Trail signage and wayfinding includes uh, signage that was approved in a contract that went to City Council March 18th, and the contract went to Comet Signs LLC to provide new signage and wayfinding throughout the World Heritage Trail. The contractor will provide new signage and wayfinding improvements at 96 locations to enhance the continuous trail. Of these locations, 28 of them are locations originally identified as a part of the Federalized Mission Trails Package 5 project, which is now being a made, made a part of this World Heritage Trail. There are two types of vehicular signs that will be installed. One will be a monumental sign, about 12 feet high, 5 feet wide, as shown on the left of your screen. The second sign is a narrow flag-like sign mounted on a pole slightly under 15 feet high. The project is set to begin construction this month in April of 2021 and will be uh, projected to be completed in the spring of 2022. So again, you saw Sean Bouvet earlier in, in some of the videos. He is our capital projects officer for this project as well. So if you need any additional information or you have questions, feel free to contact him. Also, I want to say thanks uh, for all the support of the, the, for these great projects in the World Heritage Area from Public Works. We're excited to be a part of these uh, projects and the overall development and look forward to more projects to come in the next bond program. I'll turn it back over to Colleen. Thank you, David. And now I'd like to talk about our street name changes and I'd like to introduce Valerie Rodriguez senior planner with the office of De well with development services department and um actually i'm going to start off the presentation
So I'm going to walk us through a little history on this project. Um, Shortly after the World Heritage designation in late 2015, the San Antonio River Authority began an inventory and assessment of the variety of existing wayfinding and signage throughout the World Heritage Area. This data was presented during the second World Heritage Symposium hosted in December of 2015, designated to collect feedback on ways to improve the experience. The San Antonio River Authority coordinated with other public and agencies, including the City of San Antonio, Convention and Visitors Bureau at the time, now Visit San Antonio, the World Heritage Task Force, National Park Service, and Via Metropolitan Transit. The study completed by CPA and Y in 2016 provided a comprehensive inventory of signage and with feedback from the symposium, a list of short, mid, and long-term recommendations. These recommendations included developing an approved base map to promote, and the uh, to promote and designate the trail and created a unified brand and identity. In addition to the new signage, the recommendations also included renaming some of the surface streets to eliminate confusion along the World Heritage Trail and to create a more continuous mission road. In 2016, Sarah conducted a street name changes survey that included questions for the street renaming. The vast majority of survey respondents indicated a general lack of, sorry. The vast majority of respondents appro overall approved the proposed street name changes and were supported. Some of the comments Sarah and the city of San Antonio received about the street name changes were concerns of historical significance. The city's Office of Historic Preservation, our cultural historian, uh, did some research and found that none of the, the names are related to any of the colonial missions and some names such as Napier and Ashley Road and Via Main are um, related to more residents in the area. The research concluded that none of the street lanes are from the colonial period. Via Main and Napier are not historic and are named after people not associated with the heritage of the missions. The 2020 survey featured the same questions from 2016, and overall the majority of the proposed street name changes were approved by the participants. Approximately 225 residents participated in this survey, with 50% of those residents residing in District 3. Residents from District 1 and 5 made up a combined 20% of respondents. These two districts are also within the World Heritage Area. So now I'm gonna walk us through the proposed street name changes. So the World Heritage Trail goes from the Alamo all the way to uh, the remaining four Southern Missions. So it goes from Alamo Street to St. Mary's, and then that turns into Roosevelt. Uh, section number one, there is a Mission Road. It's a leftover remnant from the River Improvement Project. And so that's very confusing to visitors because you turn on it and it dead ends. So Mission Road and Lone Star are proposed to be changed to Roosevelt Park Drive. This street name change is within District 5. The other proposed street name changes are when, within District 3. So you go along Roosevelt and then you make a left onto Mission Road and you follow Mission Road all the way to Roosevelt again where you turn and the, at the intersection of Napier. We are proposing to change Napier to Mission Road from Roosevelt Avenue to Padre Drive. Then at Section 3, Mission Road, there is a remnant of the old Mission Road that uh, goes from Napier all the way to Southeast Military, and there's no street light at that intersection. We are proposing to change that street name from Mission Road to San Jose Drive. There is also a section of Padre that we're proposing to change to Mission Road, and this leads all the way to Southeast Military Drive, where you then cross to Mission Road again, and you go by Stenson to continue on to Mission San Juan. At Section 5, we are proposing Mission Parkway to Riverfront Parkway, and then we are proposing Asakia to Espada Road, Ashley Road to Espada, and then via main to Mission Road again. And now I'd like to turn it over to Valerie, who will guide us through the process. 
Thanks, Colleen. I'm Valerie Rodriguez with Development Services. I'm a senior planner that is overseeing the street name change process, so I'm here to talk to you a little bit about that process. So as Colleen said, um, we are underway for the street name change. Uh, so the process and procedures that um, went into this project will include 10 address changes. 102 notices went out to property owners, uh, 25 of those being commercial, 72 residential, one multifamily, and four neighborhood associations. Those neighborhood associations are listed uh, on the slide that you'll see now that shows Roosevelt Park, Mission San Jose, Hot Wells Mission Reach, and Via Coronado. As part of the technical review, you'll see uh, that we have a number of different agencies that will be looking over this uh, project that include Bear Metro 911, CPS Energy Development Services, and a list of others. Moving forward into the timeline, in June of 2020, I'm sorry, in June of 2020, uh, the World Heritage Open House occurred where we presented this project to the citizens of San Antonio. There was a virtual commu community meeting on December 15, 2020. We also went to HDRC public hearing where we were approved on December 16, 2020. We then went to Planning Commission public hearing on March 10th of 2021. And after that, uh, we'll be going to City Council on May 6 of 2021. The fiscal impact for this project includes a $1,000 application fee, as well as a sign replacement fee just over $2,900. It also includes a notification fee of $459 that totals uh, $4,362.64 total. And that's all for me for uh, the street name change project. If anybody has any questions, again, my name is Valerie Rodriguez. My number is 210-207-0533. And I'll hand it back over to Colleen now. Thank you, Valerie. Mm -hmm. The next item on the agenda is an update by Dunaway and Munoz on the design for the new World Heritage Center located in District 3. And before we hear from them, I'm happy to announce that the San Antonio's very own the Witte Museum is assisting the development of an interpretive plan to inform the design enhancements, art, and other interpretive elements for the new and wonderful facility. I'd also like to announce, and this is very exciting news, that the World Heritage Center design enhancements, art, and other interpretive elements will be funded through the San Antonio Tricentennial Celebration Commission's legacy gift. This gift is a result of many generous donors and the hard work and commitment of the Tricentennial Commission. The new World Heritage Center will be a key gateway to our World Heritage San Antonio missions, anticipated to not only serve visitors from our state, our country and the world, but also local school groups and residents from the surrounding neighborhoods and community. We are excited about the opportunities this gift provides to tell the story of our San Antonio missions, the interweaving of cultures that is visible to this day, and most importantly, share the culture and heritage of the community that still remains connected to our missions and our river. And now I'd like to hand it over to Brian Musk with Dunaway and Jeff Edwards with Munoz. Good evening, uh, Brian Musk with Dunaway. Um, really happy to be here to talk about this great project, the World Heritage Center. Uh, as Colleen mentioned, the World Heritage Center is begins to tell the story of the missions and how and the unique uh, selection of being World Heritage sites. Uh, so we, we were excited about presenting and we've presented in the past and we are just developing this program and the, and the site uh, further. The project is funded with a 2017 bond. Uh, there's been 7.2 million uh, set aside for this project. And the project's located at the Mission San Jose, uh, adjacent to Mission Jose, um, at the Mission Drive in Marquis near Mission Library. Uh, and as I talked about earlier, uh, uh, Brian Mask with Dunaway and we have Jeff Edwards with Munoz. Um, and then we're excited that we've had new team members that have been added the witty that you'll hear from uh, later in the presentation. So 
so as I mentioned previously, the site is located at the Mission Drive-In area. Uh, you can see in the, in the slide that the site was chosen uh, for several reasons. One, one of the main reasons was, of course, Mission San Jose is near there, and so as visitors come to the site, they can start to see off in the distance the missions as we start telling that story of the missions. But it also great, gave it a great opportunity to uh, enliven up and, and, and uh, invoke activity in the Mission Marquee and in the library. So we see this, this site location being a great opportunity for the community to develop uh, events uh, along with the World Heritage Center. Uh, the, uh, the site also shows that we're, pr we're um, proposing to add a loop road, some small parking next to the building. Uh, there's a, an existing drainage channel that we think is a great opportunity to develop into some low impact developments uh, and collect that water and runoff and, and create a beautiful site around this, this great building. Uh, the building's also located, there's a little plaza to the outside. Um, as you can see in this blown up slide of the, of the site, uh, that plaza can, that little outdoor plaza off to the right can then flow off into the Mission Marquee, uh, that bigger large plaza and just there's a great event space we see on that side. Uh, the other elements you can see in there as we start uh, on that road, you can see we start creating an entry to let people know where the entry is to the to the building, uh, and then of course the parking and the in the landscape the, to enhance the building. I'm going to turn it over to Jeff and let let him start talking about the uh, the building itself. Hey there, thank you very much. My name is Jeff Edwards. Uh, I'm a principal with Munoz and Company Architects. Uh, hopefully many of you joined us at the, at the last meeting we had like this, and we're happy to have you back and we're happy to have all the newcomers here. At the last meeting, we kind of laid the foundation for where this project, the, the uh, World Heritage Center was gonna be located, how that came about, all of the kind of introductory information about the project. And what I said at the last meeting, we, we got a lot of great input, and what I said we were gonna do after we left that last meeting was we were gonna take that input and start working on the design. So today, I wanna kinda of walk you through real quickly our process that we went through as we uh, have started on the design, and I wanna show you a few uh, preliminary images of what we think the building could look like. So the first thing I wanna do is kinda of show you some of the inspiration slides that we considered as we started thinking about this project. Uh, what you see on the, on the screen here in front of you right now are some images of Mission San Jose. Obviously, that has to be one of the things that we look at as we're working on this project. Beautiful, beautiful uh, architecture there. In the upper left corner of the, of the slide, you'll, you'll notice an interior of the granary with the great uh, vaulted ceiling uh, that runs continuously along that space. And I want you to hold that image in your mind because that was one of, the, one of the images that we thought was very beautiful that could ha play a part in the future design of this project. Uh, we also looked at some contemporary and modern projects as well. So this is one of the most famous buildings in the world, just up the street in, uh, in Fort Worth, Texas, by uh, an architect named Lou Kahn. It's the Kimball Museum. And in addition to loving, as it says here, the way that it introduces natural light into the building and the exhibit space, we also, again, like the granary, love the way that it creates a unique and special architecture with the ceiling of that space. This has similarly has that kind of vaulted ceiling space, and we really like that. So from there, we also started looking around that area and at some of the local crafts uh, that we find here in the San Antonio area. And one of the most unique that we thought could have a real translation to this project are these brick bovedas. So these are done by local craftsmen here. And there are examples of them that we actually used when we designed uh, the Mission Branch Library, which is immediately adjacent to this project. And we loved those and thought that this could be a great opportunity to kind of extend the use of those. Uh, again, here, this is, these are some images of some of the surrounding buildings, the Mission Library, and, and I want to point out a couple of particular things. So you'll notice the materials. All of these are drawn from the surrounding area. So you'll see the San Saba sandstone, the original stucco that was on the mission used in the library. You see the brick bovidas. You see the punched uh, metal uh, light fixtures, which we liken to the craft of ojalata, the punched tin work here in the area. And you also see the decorative wrought ironwork 
all things we thought could translate to this project. We also looked at some of the other kinds of local crafts that may not be as building oriented, like papel picado. Uh, we also looked at the mission tiles, and so those are cement tiles with integral color built into them that you see all around the city, like at the McNay Art Museum and other places. And then we took those, and I want to I give you an example of how we've taken some of those kinds of elements and translated it in another project. So these are images of a medical school, the new medical school that we did for UT Rio Grande Valley down, down in, uh, in Edinburgh, Texas. And you see the intricate screen work there on the, on the front. This building was going to face due east and get a lot of sun into what was going to end up being the lobby. And we knew we needed to screen that sun to create a filtered light in that space. And so we, we created these screen elements. Here's a closer up image. And they're very decorative, but they also soften and create a dappled light that comes into the, the lobby of the building. And it's very beautiful. And I, I want to tell you a little bit how we arrived at this. So we worked with the doctors. And I, I want you to think about this process because we're going to ask for your input on this building. We worked with the doctors to identify three symbols that were very meaningful to them down there in the valley and as doctors. So you see the Asclep Asclepian, which is the medical symbol, and a couple of pre-Columbian symbols, the Olean and the Tree of Life. And then in our office, we created what we call a mashup of those three symbols to come up with a brand new symbol that took elements and parts from each of those other three to create the symbol that you saw in the previous images. And here are a couple of examples of, uh, that, that were not by us of how those kinds of beautiful filtered light conditions can create a really beautiful architectural experience. So now I'm going to get into our building. So this is the plan, and I, you look at the plan, and you're like, well, that's very simple. And yes, it is very simple. And I can describe it in just a, a couple seconds. So what you'll notice about this is that it's a simple rectangle. And all the way around the exterior, on all four sides, it's got giant windows that let lots of natural light come through. All of the services, so restrooms, the catering kitchen, storage, all those functions are grouped in the middle of the building so that you have this big, very flexible, gracious space with lots of natural light that wraps all the way around the building. And then the entire building is, is protected by a delicate veranda that shades the space um, all the way around the exterior. So here's, here's a, what we call a section if we were to slice through the middle of the building. And so in the middle where you see the big heavy black part, that's where all those services are, the restrooms and that sort of thing. And on either side, those vaults, those are the, the exhibit spaces. And, and I'm going to ask you to remember back to the bovedas that I showed you because this is what we're thinking those spaces could be. Let me show you an, ex, uh, an interior rendering of what we think that could look like. So in this view, this is one of the galleries, you'd have those big, beautiful brick bovida ceilings with the punched tin light fixtures underneath with a, hand, with a custom pattern, handcrafted pattern on those light fixtures. And then you get these big, beautiful arched windows all the way around the perimeter of the building. And if you look through the window, you can see that the veranda on the exterior that's going to admit this very delicate filtered light. And finally, I'll point out that on the floor, we've got that beautiful aqua, aquamarine blue uh, cement tile that I was talking to you about that's, that's local to this area and made here. So here's, a, here's an image of the exterior of the building with that veranda that has that punched metal work. And, and I want to point this out to you because I want you to start thinking about this. That we're showing a pattern that we got from Mission San Jose, but what we really want is we want your input, and we're hoping that you'll work with the city's artist and the Witty Museum to help us understand what the pattern on the exterior of this building can be so that when people come here, it's telling the story of us, the people from San Antonio, as they come to visit this building. So this is an image looking from the south, so kind of right in front of the library, looking back toward the Marquis Plaza. Here's another image as, as though you're on the entry road into the complex with the, the library. And then you see the, the uh, uh, World Heritage Center here. And so you can kind of see the entrance. There's the one bay that has the signage and the big arch in front of it where the entrance to the building is. Again, the big, beautiful veranda there. 
And then this is out from on Roosevelt Street, kind of looking, looking far away. And so what you see there, you see the tops of those vaulted bovedas. So that's the roof, the curved roof shape that you see on the top. And then the veranda wrapping all the way around the building. And then this is an image of the front entry with the signage kind of right off the loop road that Brian talked about and that he's creating there. You, get, you can get dropped off right in front, go right into the building, in through the big glass openings and see all of the fantastic exhibits that you're gonna help us design uh, with the witty as we move into the interpretive plan. And so with that, I think what I'd really like to do is remind you to be thinking about what images are important to create the design for the, the metal panels that wrap the veranda of the building. And now I'm gonna turn it over to the great folks from the Witty who are gonna help walk us through uh, how we're gonna come up with the interpretive plan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff and Brian. And now I'd like to introduce from the Witty, Dr. Michelle Everidge and Beth Stricker. And they're gonna tell us more about an interpretive plan and there'll be plenty of opportunities throughout the building to use that information. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. My name is Dr. Michelle Everidge. I'm a historian and the Chief of Strategic Initiatives at the Witty Museum. And I'm Beth Stricker, Vice President of Exhibitions. So we the world the city of San Antonio, Councilwoman and architect Munoz to be part of this World Heritage and mentioned telling the story of the but what and that's what the it's a inside the World Heritage Center. See, at the Witty, we use an interpretive project and the most important interpretive plan of this are going to be seeking your input here and that you want to be told center site together in an interpretive plan and that will provide the roadmap and the guideposts for the indoor and outdoor experiences so of plan to get into more it describes the visitor and touch and the approaches we can use what the what stories the exhibits tell and then how all of that can be supported with interpretive programs and even what the impact I'm someone first up in the parking lot uh, to what they remember later when they're home or what they tell their friends or co-workers uh, the interpretive plan answers the questions why what is the significance of the site what uh, it develops the themes and major stories to whom uh, it considers who's coming to the site our um, community our residents our school children how how are we going to tell these stories to them and with what, my favorite part, how are we going to tell these stories in the exhibits, in the media, in video, our interpret programs? And then the logical part, when? Uh, what's our schedule of setting priorities and timelines? Um, so like Michelle said, it, it lays out a roadmap to success. Thank you, Beth. So as I mentioned, the community input, your input, the residents, the longtime um, storytellers that we have here in San Antonio, are the most important part. So we want to know what historically you'd like to know about. What would you like to know about the people who lived here before the missions, the people who lived and worked in the missions, and the people who live and work in and around the missions today? So as we um, plan these community input sessions and public meetings, we'd like to, for you to start thinking about what stories you would like to take away from the World Heritage Center about the San Antonio missions. And I'll send it back to Colleen. Thank you, Dr. Everidge and Beth. So don't forget your feedback is important to us. So please use the chat function on Facebook or YouTube to send us your questions. Um, also, you can email us at worldheritage at sanantonio.gov or call 210-207-2111. So now I'd like to turn it over to Councilwoman Rebecca J. Villagran, who will give us an update on the Alamo plan. Good 
Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm very excited to provide an update on the Alamo plan. My name is Rebecca Villagran, and I serve as tri-chair for the Alamo Citizens Advisory Committee, as well as I sit on the Management Committee. As you have seen on the news, the City Council approved an amended restated lease agreement with the Texas General Land Office this last Thursday, April 15th, 2021. This means that the General Land Office, the City, and Alamo Trust can continue our work and our partnership to preserve and protect the Alamo site. This effort to rehabilitate the Alamo Plaza began in 2014 when the city established the Alamo Citizens Advisory Committee to develop the vision and guiding principles for an Alamo master plan. In 2015, the city, Texas General Land Office and Alamo Trust entered into a cooperative agreement to guide development of a master plan. The agreement created the project management structure and establish the vision and guiding principles as the foundation for the master plan. Then in 2017, City Council approved the Alamo master plan that consisted of five key concepts. Restore the church in Long Barrack, delineate the historic footprint, recapture the historic Mission Plaza and create a sense of reverence and respect, and create a world-class museum and visitor center, and create a sense of arrival and enhance connectivity between the site and other public spaces. Approval of the master plan was necessary to proceed with the next steps of the, for the project, which included the development of an interpretive plan. The interpretive plan built on the master, master plan's five key concepts and recommended specific site strategies. These site strategies included closing the streets, repairing and relocating the cenotaph, developing a new parade route, assessing the adaptive reuse potential for the Crockett Palace and Woolworth buildings, and establishing a formal entry to the plaza during museum hours and leasing to the, G to the general land office portions of the street and plaza necessary to recapture the historic footprint. In September 2020, the Texas Historical Commission denied the city's permit request to repair and relocate the cenotaph. In the approved Alamo plan, relocation of the cenotaph was necessary to recapture the historic mission footprint, create a sense of arrival, and build a world-class museum. Denial of the permit request meant the Alamo plan and the ground lease and management agreement needed to be amended. The parties agreed that we wanted to amend the lease and find a way to move forward. The mayor met with council members and other stakeholders and asked the partners to consider three issues. One, repurpose the Crockett and Woolworth buildings. Two, retain parade routes and cultural traditions in Alamo Plaza. And three, preserve access to Alamo Plaza. On March 1, 2021, Mayor Nuremberg appointed me as a member of the Alamo Plan Management Committee along with City Attorney Andy Segovia, and as Tri-Chair of the Alamo Citizens Advisory Committee, along with Araneta Pierce, we joined Sue Ann Pemberton. The Alamo Citizens Advisory Committee had four meetings and three listening circles in March to discuss how the plan could be amended to move forward. The Alamo Citizens Advisory Co Commission approved six statements with updated design parameters that were incorporated into an amended and restated lease agreement with the General Land Office. City Council discussed the changes on April 7th in a B session and approved the updated and restated lease agreements on April 15th. 
significant changes to the plan are the cenotaph will be repaired but not moved. The mission footprint will be delineated by paving materials or other similar means. And the plaza will remain accessible to pedestrians. The parades and key rituals will be accommodated. Streets will be closed in a phased approach and Alamo Street between Houston and Crockett will be closed starting June 1st to allow for programming and for traffic analysis and modeling. Staff also worked with stakeholders to develop an updated approach to archeology span on city-owned property. The city will initiate an archival investigation and will establish a committee with representation from local descendant groups to develop and monitor a human remains protocol for work on city property. This was also incorporated into the amended and restated lease agreement. I have a few slides to show some of those major changes and concepts. Again, the cenotaph will be repaired, but will not be moved. The parties will work together to develop a repair plan that will be reviewed by the Alamo Citizens Advisory Committee, the Office of Historic Preservation, and the Texas Historical Commission. Another change is that the historic mission footprint will not be lowered to the historic living surface. It will be delineated by paving materials or other similar means. Manage access to the site will be limited to the museum and church, long barrack and gardens. The plaza will remain open and accessible to pedestrians and will be porous. Hubs to help orient visitors to the site will be located in the museum and in the plaza area south of the historic mission footprint. It's the purple emblems on the slide. Parades and certain annual events will be allowed to continue on the site. The parades will be required to enforce procedures that acknowledge the reverence of the site. This may be a quiet zone on the historic footprint. The parade's ceremonies may continue, but there will be no bleachers on the historic footprint. The streets will be closed in a phased approach and the Alamo Street from Houston to Crockett Street will be closed by June 1st to allow the Alamo to do more programming on the plaza and the city will conduct traffic studies and modeling to determine whether improvements in the area are necessary. Moving forward, the Alamo Citizens Advisory Committee will review the interpretive plan that was developed in 2018. This will be divided into several meetings to include an overview of the plan, the Mission San Antonio de Valero, the Texas Revolution and Battle of 1836, and the post-battle era. The committee will also have a meeting to discuss the traditions and ceremonies in the plaza, and they will receive an update on the archival investigation. Later this year, they will review design of Alamo Plaza, and we expect to begin construction in early 2022. For more information, please go to sanantonio.gov backslash ccdo and click on the resource tab. We have many meetings coming forward and they will be open to the public and we look forward to hearing from you and getting your participation. Thank you very much. And Colleen, I'll send it back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you. Um, Please don't forget to send in your comments, worldheritage at sanantonio.gov, or you can put them in the chat for Facebook and for YouTube. I know we did get a request for a World Heritage Area map, and so we will be sending that to you. There's also a link on our website. 
Another question that we received is when will the improvements on Roosevelt Avenue start? The improvements on the northern section of Roosevelt will start in November of this year, and it's about a year-long project. Then the improvements on the southern section will start in June of 2022. Um, so we're very excited about the work that's going to happen on Roosevelt Road. And then we also got some people are very excited about the World Heritage Center and the opportunities for art and the contribution of the Tricentennial Commission. So thank you. And now I'm going to turn it over to our partner, the National Park Service. They manage the San Antonio missions. And I'd like to introduce Superintendent Christine Jacobs. Thank you so much, Colleen. Thank you, Councilwoman Villagran, and uh, good evening, San Antonio. My name is Christine Jacobs. I'm the superintendent of San Antonio Missions National Historical Park. Uh, I moved to San Antonio in October of 2020 from Paris, France, where I served uh, for the American Battle Monuments Commission for several years. Prior to that, I was with the National Park Service in the regional office in Denver, serving as the director for Indian Affairs and American Culture. And I couldn't be more thrilled to be in San Antonio. The United States established Yellowstone as a national park in 1872 and initiated a global movement to protect such areas as national treasures. 100 years later, it was the United States that proposed the World Heritage Convention to the international community, and the United States was the first country to ratify it. The World Heritage Convention, the most widely accepted international conservation treaty in human history, is the American national park idea carried out globally. The Secretary of the Interior, through the National Park Service, is responsible for identifying and nominating U.S. sites to the World Heritage List. By 2019, 1,121 sites in 167 countries around the world were placed on the World Heritage List. Currently, there are 24 World Heritage sites in the United States, and San Antonio Missions is one of them. Each World Heritage site is unique and significant in its own right. But World Heritage Sites have been identified as having an outstanding universal value. Inscribed in 2015, San Antonio Missions World Heritage Site was the first and still is the only World Heritage Site in Texas. San Antonio Missions National Historical Park is a unit of the National Park Service and was established as a Park Service unit in 1983. The park preserves four of the five Spanish frontier missions that, along with the Alamo and the associated lands, comprise San Antonio Missions World Heritage Site. The de designation includes Mission Concepcion, Mission San Jose, Mission San Juan, Mission Espada, Mission San Antonio de Valero, Rancho de las Cabras, and their associated irrigation and agricultural features. In spite of the pandemic, I am pleased to share that San Antonio Missions National Historical Park welcomed nearly 1.2 million visitors in 2020. The open outdoor spaces within the World Heritage Site were a respite for social distancing and recreation for the San Antonio community during the challenges brought on by COVID-19. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the team at San Antonio Missions National Historical Park our partners, Mission Heritage Partners, the Archdiocese, the San Antonio River Authority, the City of San Antonio, and the World Heritage Office for helping us to keep the park open so that visitors could safely visit and for our team at the park, enhancing virtual access through online programming and outreach. There are several current activities that I'd like to highlight um, for this week, in fact, is uh, National Park Week. So April 17th to the 25th is National Park Week. Um, this past Friday, uh, San Antonio Missions National Historical Park hosted a live Twitter chat to kick off National Park Week. And that chat was retweeted by Everglades and Hawaii Volcanoes, two other World Heritage Sites. This past Saturday, and I have a photo uh, in the slide deck, San Antonio Missions National Historical Park hosted History and Genealogy Day, an annual event where mission descendants share family trees and stories and talk about the importance of connections to place. Hundreds of visitors were in attendance. Sunday, April 18th was World Heritage Day around the world. San Antonio Missions hosted a live chat with more than 92,000 tweet impressions, a remarkable reach. 
The theme for World Heritage Day 2021 was complex past, diverse futures, a particularly relevant theme for San Antonio missions. Lastly, I'm excited to share that the National Park Service has rolled out an app and San Antonio Missions is featured. With it, you can visit the park, uh, engage with the overall World Heritage Site and, and its trails, and we look forward to your visit. Thank you very much, San Antonio, and thank you to the World Heritage Office for coordinating this open house, and we are happy to serve as your park. Thank you, Superintendent Jacobs. I get so excited about this, I get choked up. So, because I <laughs> really. Um, so now we have a video from uh, the San Antonio River Authority. Steve Graham is the interim general manager. And so we're gonna play that video. And please don't forget to send in your questions. Um, if you're not able to send them in tonight, um, we, we can answer them later on. So uh, this is, you can watch this video over and over and ask your questions at your convenience. So now for Steve Graham. Hi, my name is Steve Graham. I'm the Interim General Manager of the San Antonio River Authority. Uh, I'm excited to be part of the 2021 World Heritage Open House today. The River Authority has been very involved with the city since April of 2016 when the World Heritage Office opened. And so the River Authority has collaborated with the city and the National Park Service to maximize the impact and value of this important cultural resource. Some uh, things that we've been doing here recently, uh, we've been working to increase the usage of our trails. Uh, during COVID, uh, the Mission Reach has been a, an access point for many people in our community to get outdoors. And of course, our trails connect to the various missions. Also, uh, ecologically, uh, you know, we are restoring the river. We are doing a number of studies. One that's really very important is the avian study that we've done where we've identified over 65,000 birds that we've actually counted. We've actually uh, seen over 200 different unique species of birds utilizing the mission reach. Uh, additionally, we are working with the National Park Service uh, to increase security, work on issues of homelessness, and making sure that the properties along the Mission Reach and the National Park Services are kept safe for everybody that wants to go visit them. We're also uh, working with the National Park Service in acquiring additional properties along the Mission Reach, but within the National Park Service boundary. I'd like to also mention that uh, we have a new general manager who will be starting May 3rd. His name is Derek Bays. Uh, I'm in contact with Derek every day, and he's very excited about coming to the city uh, being engaged with our World Heritage partners and the city of San Antonio. So we look forward to Derek's coming to our city. I want to invite you also to go visit our website at sariverauthority.org where you can see a lot of the things that the River Authority is involved in, uh, get maps and information about all the things that you can do along the Mission Reach. I want to thank all of you to co uh, for coming to the 2021 World Heritage Open House for spending time to learn about our important community assets. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. You can still uh, submit your feedback at any time. Just uh, reach out via worldheritage at sanantonio.gov or you can always call 210-207-2111 and we look forward to hearing your questions. Again, in closing, I'd like to thank my staff um, who is there answering questions and monitoring social media. I'd really like to thank Rogelio Munoz um, who coordinated everything and put everything together. It's quite a monumental feast to do, a feat to do this every year. Um, and he worked behind the scenes to, to do this very well and smoothly. I'd also like to thank again, Public Works, uh, Development Services for being here this evening. We really appreciate all the work that you do and our partnership with you. Again, thank you to our partners, the National Park Service, the San Antonio River Authority for their partnership and coordination. And really, I, tonight is our last World Heritage Open House. And I would really like to thank Councilwoman uh, Rebecca J. Villagran uh, for her leadership um, as we all work uh, to uh, really leverage this World Heritage designation to improve our community for all. So thank you so much, Councilwoman. Good night, and everyone have a great evening.